Well hello! Today's video is a bit different. Yesterday I saw a post on Facebook uh, that originally turned up from Fox Business News I think. It's about a guy who came on called Paolo Zampoli who appeared to be there campaigning for even harsher regulations worldwide against drones. Our next guest wants to go a whole lot further. He wants new drone regulations on a worldwide basis. Now he's actually the UN ambassador to Dominica but seems to have a real bee in his bonnet about drones. Here's what he wants. What kind of regulations on drones do you want worldwide? Quickly. Well, I think uh, the, the world is moving very fast with all this new technology, and uh, I feel that we have to keep the frequency at 2.4, 5.8. What, 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 what's the frequency? What's well, all, we have about 20 million drones in the sky yeah. that um, are all based all on this uh, um, original frequency. And uh, to, if we keep it at this frequency, it will be very easy for us to uh, create an electronic fence, a dome on, on the airport or, or on a... Um, so that's the key to it. So in somewhat of a muddled way, Paolo is suggesting he wants to create some sort of RF fence around airports and places because he believes that everything that flies must use 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz technology. I think Which this is one, one of the most important things is to keep it like this because if you jam or if you block this frequency you don't create collateral damage. What collateral damage? Well, no one's going to die here. Well, except some of the teenagers that suddenly now can't get onto the Wi-Fi networks to post on Snapchat because some jokers just wiped out 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. Yes, Wi-Fi uses those frequencies as well. Of course, we're not even getting into the fact that there are more frequencies at use in flying models than 5.8 and 2.4, and you don't even need an RC link to fly. Mission plan, anybody? But wait, there's more. Well, th th this is a regular drone, and uh, I'm, I'm scared myself uh, uh, to speak about it. But, uh, you know, we have to be aware, and to be aware we can uh, uh, prevent a uh, disaster. These things can carry a small uh, bottle okay. of, uh, of liquid, like a nerve gas. And we know uh, that one day uh, the Dash, the ISIS, has already uh, threatened the, the Vatican, St. Peter's Square, and the Olympics will use drones for real attack. Yep, Paolo has scared himself silly by strapping a bottle of water to the bottom of a Mavic Pro and suggesting this could be a nerve agent. Well, I, I have to say, I don't think much of his uh, deployment method. He's got a, a bottle that's zip tied on. Is he expecting to land it and hope that someone unscrews it when they find it? I'm making a joke of this, of course, because I think the guy's coming across as an alarmist idiot. Yeah, of course you could attach something quite dangerous to a drone and fly it somewhere. Equally though, you could simply take this dangerous thing and walk into a crowded shopping centre or a stadium full of people and let it out, detonate it, which is kind of what terrorists do. The, the big point here that simply creating a nerve agent, or let's say for the sake of it, a dirty bomb, isn't a trivial thing. You can't just buy my first chemistry kit and whip up a nerve agent. It takes specialist expertise and knowledge and equipment um, and dirty bombs. I mean, when the USSR collapsed, people were freaking out and they'll, they'll be like, oh my God, you'll be able to buy weapons grade plutonium at any shop in the Ukraine. That hasn't happened either. And one thing the government are is very good at looking for the sort of materials that would go into these sort of things and the people that were trying to accumulate the expertise to do that. They're very good at that. Unfortunately though, what the terrorists have noticed is they're getting a lot more success by not using any expertise, by doing something anybody can do. For example, we've had attacks here in the UK and there's been other countries where uh, people have just been mowed down and murdered uh, simply by terrorists driving a car uh, on the pavement or simply getting a knife and stabbing people. Horrible acts and I'm not seeking to make any sort of light of that. But the fact is using a drone as a delivery method for a terrorist device is a complex thing that's more likely to go wrong than somebody driving it or walking it or, or simply throwing it. It's the intent of the people to do harm that are the problem, not the delivery device itself. Wait though, Paolo isn't done. Yeah, just a moment ago, you had it look, look like a yeah. gun on the set. Yeah, re let me see this thing. Okay, now that... This, this is a dummy, don't worry, don't get scared. Wait, wait a second, uh -huh. wait a second. It's a frequency. You point that at a drone, you can point and if it's this got at that drone. frequency, you can bring the drone down. down. Instead of shoot the drone, which is if he's carrying a, di a dynamite or an explosive, can create a real damage. Okay. So you just capture the drone like a pilot and you send a ticket down. Yep, it's the gun again. Great prop that one, isn't it? And once again, I revert you back to the frequencies. There will always be a way around a frequency for people intent on doing wrong. For a casual phantom user straying to the wrong airspace, brilliant. That gun will bring it down. But this really isn't what he's talking about. He's talking about really intentional attacks. 
Fortunately, the guy from Fox News has already given it his careful analysis. That it seems to me like a viable plan. I think it is uh, very, very possible to, at least, uh, is, a, is a good uh, prevention for the airport, to, but the dome is essential. Okay, but Dominica plays on the world stage here. Congratulations, you, sir. sir. We appreciate it. Paolo, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Please call me anytime. Wow. So, my original intention was to poke a bit of fun at Paolo for what he's saying, but even I'm not that condescending. Well done, Dominica. Gold star for you. I almost expected the guy to pat him on the head. I've got to ask, what sort of credentials do you need to get on that show? Hello? At Fox News? Yeah, I've got an important job title with absolutely no idea of what I'm talking about, but an agenda to really scare people. Yep, yeah, I can be that one. Bye. So my initial feeling was to say, you know, when you've got a little bit of knowledge, it can do a lot more harm. Paolo's learnt that there's a couple of frequencies in use and he's just extrapolated this and is intent on causing damage to us. Or by saying there's this drone fence that we can create. The alternative title is Village Idiot Comes Good on Major TV Network. However, a little digging reveals that not all is what it seems. Paolo isn't just some village idiot and clearly has a more complex agenda. If we take a look at his Facebook page, very easy to find, he's very proud of his accomplishments, puts all the posts out there including the one that he appeared on this interview for Fox Business. But if we head down the page a little bit we'll find a post last year where he posted a video that seems to show what looked like a bit of a TED talk involving small little quads that are equipped with a detonation device to murder people. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. It's not real, of course. Uh, it comes from a video called Slaughterbots, which is a fictionalised view of what a group called AutominousWeapons.org fear might one day happen. And their campaign is to ban any type of autonomous weapon, not drones themselves. There's nothing on Palace Facebook page to say this is a fictionalised event. And in fact, it's been edited slightly, so it's only got the real juicy bits in there. There's just a link to a website called Argent Avis Drone, if I'm pronouncing that correctly seemingly a defence company. This pattern is repeated again a post from last year with another video of what could happen view of drones. This time we have drones spying presumably on nuclear sites and detonating into crowds of people in the stadium. But don't worry this time there's a solution called Falcon Shield which will protect you and land all these rogue drones before they can go around exploding people. Again that website Argent Visa Drone appears once again and there's no real content on that site, it's just sort of placeholder stuff for stuff that's going to come. But if you do poke around a bit, you will come across this picture. And I recognise that picture because it was the one shown in the news report. Like I said, there's no detail to find on the website itself, but if you go ahead and look at the HTML source code, you will find this official site of Agenta Visa Ambassador Paulo Zampoli. Wow! So he really isn't just some village idiot that is so overcome with worry about drones he wants to warn the world about it. What it looks like to me, and correct me if you think I'm going down the wrong lines, is some guy that's trying to deliberately grab as much media attention as possible to put the world in even more drone hysteria so he can simply line his pockets by selling a ineffectual counter drone device. Speculation aside, at the very least it looks like a serious conflict of interests. Once again though, it's the media putting this out there Where's your due diligence, where's your facts checking, and where's your counterpoint? Pitiful, isn't it? Anyway, links down to all the videos I've mentioned below if you want to check them out for yourself. And this video came to my attention because it was posted in the Let's Drone Out Facebook page. Let's Drone Out is a weekly podcast about drones, although in a fun way, at 8pm UK time, which I'm a part of, so check it out if you want to. Link down there as well. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful and not too depressing. I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.